If you've owned a PS4, you might know how annoyingly convoluted and time-consuming it can be to upgrade the hard drive so you can have more storage space for all those sweet games and trophies. Heck, you may even have seen my video on how to do it. However, with the PS5 increasing your storage capacity by adding an M.2 SSD couldn't be easier. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do it. Welcome to the middle of nowhere. Before you even crack open your PS5 to plop in your shiny new M.2 drive, I first want to go over the basics of this powerful but small form factor storage. Not all M.2 SSDs are created equal and you need to know which M.2 drives you can use with your PS5. I'll be saying a lot of letters and numbers that might mean very little to you and that's okay. Just know this information will help you buy the correct drive for your PS5. If you already know all this stuff, feel free to skip ahead to the actual upgrade process. First off, Make sure you buy a drive that has the following somewhere in its item description. M.2 NVMe PCIe 4.0 by 4 SSD, that is socket 3 or key M. Now let's break down what all these things are and what they mean. Quick disclaimer, I may not be 100% accurate in describing these technical bits of information, but I have done research and the descriptions I'm about to give are as I understand them. Feel free to correct me or expand on the information in the comments below. The term M.2 refers to the form factor, and an M.2 drive is basically the size of a stick of gum. NVMe is the communication protocol the SSD uses to communicate to your computer, or in this case, PS5. And PCIe is the interface or how the drive physically connects to your computer, or PS5, and how fast it can communicate with it. For example, if you see PCIe 4.0 by 4, you, you are seeing a device that uses the PCIe interface. 4.0 refers to the generation, and by 4 is a way to let you know how fast the drive is by how many PCIe lanes it's using. So my Samsung NVMe PCIe 4.0 by 4 drive is a 4-lane device. An example of a device you might be more familiar with is a graphics card for your PC. Most current GPUs are either PCIe 3.0 or 4.0, meaning they use the 3rd or 4th generation PCIe standard. And for the most part, they are all by 16 or by 8, meaning they use 16 or 8 lanes available to communicate with the CPU. The more lanes available, the faster it can communicate, and NVMe drives typically top out at 4. Moving on. SSD stands for Solid State Drive, and basically means there's no moving parts like a traditional spinning platter drive. Instead, there are individual chips on a solid state drive, each with a certain amount of storage capacity. The socket or key refers to connection type or how the M.2 SSD connects to the slot on your device. Many devices are single keyed, meaning they can only fit into one kind of slot, but sometimes you might find an M plus B device, meaning it can fit into either an M key slot or B key slot. Next is drive size, and you'll need to pay attention to the size of the drive you buy as the PS5 only supports the following sizes, and by size I mean physical size. 2230, 2242, 2260, 2280, and 22110. The first two digits, 22, refers to the width of the drive, in millimeters, and the remaining numbers refers to its length, also in millimeters. For example, the Samsung 980 Pro I'll be using is a 2280 drive, so it's 22 millimeters wide and 80 millimeters long. When it comes to capacity, the PS5 can accept drive sizes anywhere from 256 gigabytes up to four terabytes. Right now, with storage prices what they are, one and two terabyte drives provide the most storage for the money. I personally recommend saving up for a two terabyte drive as this hits the sweet spot for both capacity and pricing. While a four terabyte drive offers loads of storage space, the cost for the capacity is usually more than double that of a two terabyte drive. So definitely consider your wallet before making this purchase. After capacity, you'll need to make sure the drive you've selected or are looking at can read data fast enough. All computing storage devices have a read and write speed regardless of interface or communication protocol. For the PS5, the recommended read speed for your drive is 5,500 megabytes per second or faster. Luckily, the Samsung 980 Pro I bought has a read speed of around 7,000 megabytes per second. Do keep in mind, regardless of how fast your drive is, beyond the recommended 5500 megabytes per second, not all games are playable with the same performance as they would be if you used the PS5's internal SSD. So you may want to shuffle where the game you're currently playing is stored if you encounter any issues or problems. Finally, for the PS5, you'll want to look for drives with integrated heat sinks. The models I've listed in the description should all have one. Because there is no active cooling really flowing over the NVMe SSD area, the heatsink will help keep the temperatures for the drive's controller specifically relatively low or at least keep it from getting too hot. Just make sure the heatsink isn't too tall or you won't be able to reassemble your PS5. 
If you've already bought a drive for your PS5 and it doesn't have a heat sink, you should be able to use it without issue. However, if heat is a concern, you may want to look into a third party heat sink for your NVMe SSD. Okay, I know that was a lot of information. Probably more information about M.2 NVMe drives than you ever wanted to know. If you were to take all of what I just presented to you and boil it down into something simple for you to input into a search field at a shopping site or search engine, simply type the following, M.2 NVMe SSD PCIe 4.0 PS5. This will greatly improve your chances of finding a compatible drive for your PlayStation. Alternatively, I've done some of the work for you, so feel free to save some time and take a look at the NVMe drives I've linked in the description. You've bought yourself that spiffy new M.2 NVMe SSD. Now it's time to install the drive into your PS5. All you're going to need is a well-lit room, a flat surface to work on, and a Phillips head screwdriver with a number one head. Be sure to touch a metal grounded object to remove any static electricity from your body, and make sure that your PS5 is both turned off and unplugged from the wall. When you lay the PS5 flat on the table, make sure the PS5 logo is facing down and the front is facing away from you. You might also want to have something soft underneath the console like a towel or a blanket like I have. If you have the optical version of the PS5, the disc slot should be at the top like it is here. Next, we're going to lift and slide the cover away by grabbing this corner. And then it will go flying. We're gonna keep this take because that's just funny. After the cover of your PS5 has lodged itself into your wall, we're gonna go ahead and take our screwdriver and remove the, the screw right here as well as the cover. Make sure you do not drop the screw into the fan as that could prove to be disastrous. So just unscrew it here and kind of do the rest of it with your fingers. It's pretty long. If you have a bowl, that's magnetized, I highly recommend that. The cover should just kind of pop off. And then there we go. Inside you'll see a small screw that also has a spacer or standoff and the slot for your M.2 drive, which is right here. You also see some markings for the various lengths of M.2 drives that the PS5 supports. Basically, the first thing you're gonna do is go ahead and hopefully know the length of your M.2 drive. Mine is an 80, so I'm gonna put it right here. Next, we're going to go ahead and unscrew the screw and move that spacer. Okay, and it is magnetized, so that's good. The screw is, anyway. So gently just move that spacer to where it needs to go. Easy peasy. Next, you're going to insert your NVMe drive at an angle. There's really, because you can kind of see here where there's a little a gap here, that's where it's keyed. So there's really only one way to insert this drive. So you just want to insert it at a slight angle. Don't use too much force. You'll feel it slip in. And then take your screw, put on your screwdriver again. Again, a magnetized screwdriver is very beneficial. Push your NVMe drive down and go ahead and screw in the drive. After that, it's just a matter of reverse order. Put the cover back on. And screw it back in. After you have the slot cover back on and it's screwed in, go ahead and recover your PS5 cover from the wall and slide it back on. Putting the cover back on is pretty much a reverse order. Just go ahead and at a slight angle, line it up and slide it back on. You'll hear an audible click if you get it first try, just like that. And that's it. Now all you have to do is plug the PS5 back in and format your new drive. Upon turning the PS5 on, you should see the formatting guide. Follow the instructions and that's basically it. You're finished and are able to use your new drive and put games on it. And that's all there is for adding storage to your PS5. It's so much easier than the PS4 was. Let me know if you've upgraded your PS5 yet and which drive you went with. Thanks for watching everybody. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, hit that like button and share any questions or comments you have down below. You can show your support for the channel by getting subscribed and don't forget to click that notification icon so you don't miss out on any future content. And hey, while you're here, why not check out some of the other videos I've made. I'm Seth and I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.